The Congregation of Holy Cross has never forgotten its origins. Founded in France during the early 19th century, the congregation responded to a need to educate God's poorest and most needy. The war-ravaged country had neglected all schools for a generation. When the brothers of St. Joseph, soon to be members of the Congregation of Holy Cross, went out one by one, founding rural schools across the land, little did they realize the inspiration their pioneering efforts would have on the brothers who followed them. Nor could they envision the impact their example would have on hundreds of thousands of young people around the world through the decades and century to follow. On Monday, September 13, 1841, Six religious brothers and a priest, members of the Congregation of Holy Cross, arrived in New York City. Their 39-day journey on the SS Iowa brought them from their homeland in Le Mans, France. The group had come at the request of Celestin de la Hollandière, the Bishop of Vincennes, Indiana. The bishop had seen the need for a school to be opened in the southern part of the young, awakening state, which then was part of the American frontier. The group set up headquarters on a 160-acre farm made available to them by the bishop at St. Peter's Colony, a Catholic settlement some 30 miles from Vincennes, near the present town of Montgomery, Indiana. The religious superior and founder of the congregation, Basil Anthony Moreau, had carefully chosen the group. Many had volunteered. But Moreau knew that the best among them would be needed for the arduous task that lay ahead to guarantee success of the mission. The group included three teachers, a carpenter, a tailor, and a farmer. A young priest, Father Edward F. Soren, would be chaplain for the group as well as religious superior. Brother Vincent, Jean Pio, a licensed teacher and the patriarch of the group at age 44, had joined the Brothers of St. Joseph in 1821. In France, the brothers had looked to Brother Vincent as a dedicated developer of educational programs. He was the only one of the group to have much experience of religious life, and he would devote many of his remaining 49 years in America to train young brothers for the schools operated by the congregation. The two fledgling teachers accompanying Vincent to Indiana, brothers Anselm and Gatien, were novices in the congregation. Though they held great potential, both were to have short teaching careers in Holy Cross. Anselm, Pierre Caillot, just 16 when he arrived, was much loved by students in his first mission to the U.S. Tragically, Brother Anselm drowned in the Ohio River just four years after arriving in Indiana. Brother Gatien, Urbain Monsimer, also a bright young prospect and the first to learn English well, was considered the rising star of the group. Within the first six months of the group's arrival, Gatien was sent from St. Peter's to open a second school about four miles southwest of the original location. His efforts in the new community were cut short at the end of the decade when he became a 49er. The community sent him west to California in an unsuccessful attempt to find gold, which would have provided badly needed funds for the developing mission. From there, Gatien left the congregation and returned to France where he died a year later. The remaining brothers, Francis Xavier, René Patois, a carpenter, Joachim, Guillaume André, a tailor, and Lawrence, Jean Menage, a farmer, made their individual contributions to the domestic and agrarian life of the community. Their goal was to use the farm to support their educational apostolate, which charged students only $18 per quarter for tuition and board. When Brother Lawrence died in 1873, Soren would write that no one had contributed more to the building of the University of Notre Dame. The brothers' ambitions soon paid off. Their practical skills, combined with disciplined teaching, 
brought success to the community within the first year of operation. Buoyed by their achievements, the brothers sought to expand their prospering enterprise and educational mission to include a college similar to the French model of a primary and secondary boarding school. However, the bishop denied their request because a similar school had already been established in nearby Vincennes. Disappointed by their inability to expand, the community decided to accept another offer from the bishop. They were granted 650 acres of land more than 200 miles to the north. Here they could establish a college on their own terms. On Saturday, November 26, 1842, the Holy Cross community arrived in northern Indiana. They immediately named the new plot of land Notre Dame de Lac. A log chapel and a college building were constructed within the first year to replace the inadequate wooden structures they occupied during their first severe winter of 1842-43. This settlement would become the first permanent foundation of the Congregation of Holy Cross in the United States. A tradition of educational excellence was soon established. Emphasis on regular study habits and firm discipline were cornerstones from the earliest days of this boarding school. Skills learned by the young men of Notre Dame, including Holy Cross religious, would eventually be carried to every corner of the world. As the first religious congregation in the United States having teaching brothers, Holy Cross has been responsible for conducting 123 schools and staffing a large number of parishes over the past century and a half. Some of the schools established by the brothers were short-lived. Among these, numerous parish schools in Chicago, Cincinnati, and New York City. But many others have flourished. One of the oldest Catholic boys' schools in the United States, Holy Cross in New Orleans, was opened in 1849. Five brothers left Notre Dame, with Brother Vincent as the director, to take over an orphanage. With the help of several Holy Cross sisters, the orphanage ultimately grew into a high school on the banks of the Mississippi River. The school still thrives today. With the coming of a new century, the brothers' training became more advanced and the brothers moved into secondary education, which became their primary ministry. Central Catholic High School was opened in Fort Wayne in 1909. A year later, Holy Trinity High School was established in Chicago to serve the children of Polish immigrants. Today, the school still reflects the congregation's ability to change with the times while still being true to its mission. Holy Trinity School now ministers to predominantly African-American and Hispanic families who have made Chicago their home. There are many other success stories, each with its own history and its own ministry to the service of youth. In the period between World War II and 1970, the congregation saw significant achievements in the brothers' educational apostolate. Large high schools were opened in cities with sizable Catholic populations. The schools emphasized educational excellence and brought educational opportunities seldom experienced by American Catholics on such a large scale. Cities in New York State, Ohio, and California would see schools of excellence come into existence, administered and staffed by large numbers of brothers committed to education. Students would carry the ideals and values of the Congregation of Holy Cross with them into diverse professions. By 1964, there were close to 2,100 Holy Cross brothers and priests in the United States. They carried out the congregation's mission in primary and secondary schools, boys' homes, colleges and universities, in parish work and ministries to the poor both in the United States and in foreign countries. The vision grows more vibrant today. 
If one were to identify what makes Holy Cross education distinct from that of other religious communities, adaptability would be the key factor. Cross Ministries extend far beyond the limits of the formal structured classroom. There is compassion to meet the needs of all, rich and poor, gifted and average, helping each group realize its own potential as members of society and the Kingdom of God. Since that autumn day a century and a half ago, a multitude of men have passed this way. Men who have lived by their vows. Men who have walked side by side following the Lord. Theirs is a glorious heritage. Hundreds of thousands of young people in North and South America, Europe, Africa, India, Bangladesh and Haiti have grown and matured under the loving and persistent care of the brothers and priests of the Congregation of Holy Cross. It is with clear understanding of their rootedness, their heritage, that they recreate the vision and values to lead them into the future. The Congregation invites those who wish to join in the long tradition of regenerating vision and commitment to be a part of this unique Holy Cross family of cleric and lay religious. Our commitment is an invitation for our fellow Christians and sojourners to fulfill their vocation. And for ourselves, it is a concrete way of working with them for the spread of the gospel and with all for the development of a more just and human society. Their heritage serves as a source of the courage they need to face life's ongoing challenges and the reason for hope-filled experiences of the risen Christ in our midst. For the kingdom to come in this world, disciples must have the competence to see and the courage to act. <laughs>